Hello and welcome. Today we'll be looking at the AI22 Harmonic Mixer. This is a 6 HP Moog style mixer. But this isn't your standard clean mixer, it's a character adding harmonic mixer. It clips, crackles, crunches, and hisses. It could give your waveform some extra oomph, and it's said that this Moog style harmonic mixer is kind of that secret special sauce to creating a full, real Moog style patch. And if we look at the guts of this module, we'll see that it is stupid simple. No trim pots, not even an IC chip. So you could say this is super analog. So we'll see on this mixer, we have three inputs, each with its own level knob. We have a master level, and then we have this bias knob here, which previously existed as a trim pot on the back of Moog style mixers but you put the bias knob up front so you could do that fine tuning and harmonic adjustment without having to take the module off the rack and use the trim pot in the back. And I wanna say with this bias knob up front, you can really find awesome sweet spots with this mixer. And you'll see that a little bit later when I hit a bias sweet spot with just a pulse wave. Now let's dive in and see how this mixer sounds. So first, before we patch anything in, let's take a look how the bias control affects our mix. Right now I have the bias in the center, and if I go counterclockwise, it doesn't really do too much. But then if I go clockwise, it starts to bring our voltage up into the positive a little bit. And we can offset our signal by a little bit of positive or negative voltage. And it seems like it's going exponential, which is why when the bias is at noon, our voltage is not halfway. Not until we get right there. Now that's cool and all, but let's take a look at it with some input sources. So I have a triangle wave going into input one here. We see it's just a normal triangle wave. But what happens when we play with the bias? It kind of smushes it one way or another, and you can see we're getting a little clipping. So to really push this, I put this oscillator into a buffered molt because an unbuffered molt kind of messes up with our signal and it changes up the harmonic qualities of it, and you'll see that in just a second. But if I add in more of this same signal, I can just push it further and clip it more. And you can see how it's doing interesting things to the shape and it's adding a little bit of a pulse width to it. Or we could give it a logarithmic sort of shape with some pulse on the underside. And let's add in a third of the same signal. We have a wider pulse. So we could see how this is adding some nice harmonic content to just a saw wave. And now let's take a look at this with, say, a triangle wave. We have really interesting clipping here of this wave. Let's zoom out. or a pulse wave. And you can see it's not really adding much harmonic content with the pulse wave. With the additional added on pulse waves, but well, we could get some interesting stuff. At certain levels with the bias. But what happens when we don't use a buffered molt and we use, say, a stackable cable? We could see already on the first input. What? So it's doing something weird with the zero scope, actually. But it is doing some weird, weird stuff with this. But then if I plug the time back in, it's fine. So try using an unbuffered molt, but it might do weird stuff. And to answer probably the first question I had with this module is, does it accept CV? 
Yes, it does. And when we do adjustments on the bias here, we could get interesting clipping on the bottom or on the top. So as I mentioned before, this harmonic mixer is kind of that secret special sauce to Moog style patches because it adds those harmonic details that you wouldn't get in a normal mixer. And just to show you how much harmonics we get, I put three sine waves, each an octave up from each other, into each input. So well, here's our first sine wave. And I'm not going to go full volume first, so we could just hear our sine waves. Second sine wave. And our third sine wave. So now once I start to go beyond a certain point, we build up some harmonics when it starts to clip a little bit. And if we go all the way, we get some crazy harmonics going. And again, this is just sine waves. Let's adjust the bias. With them all at full, it's not doing too much. But we get some different harmonics with the bias control here. And this is how we could get a nice full Moog style patch with just seemingly sine waves. All we got to do is patch this into a filter and then a VCA and we're good to go. So speaking of that, let's build a nice Moog style patch. Okay, now I have a classic Moog style patch patched up where I have two separate oscillators going in, a noise source, and that mixer going out into a filter and then a VCA. I don't have any resonance on the filter, so we could hear just the harmonic mixer making that harmonic content. To start, I have a pulse wave on the first input, a saw wave on the second input, and then filtered blue noise going into the third input. And now let's hear this with a sequence, and I'll start mixing these around. And I'll play with the bias. Let's give us a bigger envelope so we could hear more of it. with a different sequence. And let's play with the pulse width of the pulse wave. And what I think is interesting with this mixer is it kind of adds that similar harmonic content and raspy squelchiness in times as the Wasp filter. And now let's look at some more things through the harmonic mixer. And now I have my guitar plugged in to the harmonic mixer. And I have it just molted 
so I can increase the voltage on it and increase the distortion. As you can hear, I just get a little crackle when I play a little bit louder. I'm going to start off playing quietly and gradually play louder and louder. And now let's increase the voltage by adding a second one in. So you can hear right off the bat, unless I play really quiet. We're getting some of that drive in there, so it's a little bit more sensitive overdrive basically. play with the bias a little. Let's just go in the middle and I'm going to add a third one in and let's see how crazy this goes. Yeah, we're pretty much losing all pitch, but with these a bit lower, you get some nice slight overdrive that I might go parallel with something else. But you know what? I think it just worked best with just one input. And it's nice for a nice lo-fi, crackly, broken speaker, broken tube kind of effect. Okay, now I have some piano routing out of my DAW into the harmonic mixer. I'm bringing it up to modular levels from line levels with my case here. And then I have the signal molted with a stackable to go into all three again so we could see how it sounds when we really push it. So we could hear we get that little bit of crackle in that little high-end vibration sort of sound. Now let's pull the volumes up more. And the third. sounding really broken in parts, there's some really nice harmonic content happening in areas. it with piano. Okay, and now I have drums going into it, patched up the same way as the other ones with the molt multiplying the signal. So here's a basic drum beat, and you'll hear the bass really start to go once I crank this up more. Play with the bias. And up this 
third one. Different drum beat. A little bit different drum beat. We should be able to get a nice sweet spot though, where it just sounds really heavy. That's all for this video on the AI22 Harmonic Mixer from AI Synthesis. If you want to learn more about this module, there's a link in the description. And until next time.